So to better understand what happens to blood once it goes to the glomerulus, let's briefly zoom in on one of these guys to get a better picture of what's going on. So we'll continue to draw our glomerulus as just this cartoonish little glob. And we know that we have a afferent arterial coming in. And then we have two things coming out. We have another blood vessel coming out, which is gonna carry blood out. And this is not called the afferent arterial, but it's called the efferent arterial. Not a big difference, which sometimes makes it easy to confuse. But the word efferent means going away from. The word afferent means going towards. The word efferent means going away from. And what is the efferent arterial going away from? Well, it's the glomerulus. So as you can tell, the glomerulus is the center of attention here. So we have that coming out, and then we also have something else coming out, and that is something we'll talk a lot about, which is called a nephron. And what's coming out through the nephron is not blood, but actually something called filtrate. Filtrate. And filtrate is fluid that will eventually become urine. But we don't call it urine yet because it's going to have to be heavily modified before it is urine. So we're going to talk plenty about what happens here, but for now we're following the path of blood. So what happens with the blood after the efferent arterial? Well, actually, after the efferent arterial, it goes into a capillary bed. And that capillary bed, which I'm drawing here, we call peritubular capillaries. And we'll understand why it's called peritubular later. For now, just memorize that. And for now, also just know that the peritubular capillaries feed the kidney with nutrients and oxygen. And that's probably what you're used to thinking of capillaries as doing, and that is what they're doing. And that means that once blood comes out of the peritubular capillaries, it's now deoxygenated, so now we can draw it as blue. And now it enters the venous system, so that it starts heading back towards the heart. And the path of venous blood getting back out of the kidney pretty much mirrors the path of arterial blood coming into the kidney. So you have bigger and bigger vessels that take blood that's joining from other vessels and they come together and these bigger vessels eventually join and become the renal vein and leave the kidney.